Welcome to the Mycelium Network Podcast, a podcast for early stage web developers and the mentors, teachers, and communities that help them along the way. Welcome, Soha. Hi. Uh, yeah, thank you for having me at the podcast. Uh, it's, it's really great that uh, you are doing so amazing stuff for the community. It's my pleasure. So, um, I think to get this started off, maybe tell me where you're currently at and a fun fact about yourself. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, so currently, like I am working as a software engineer at Marvin, uh, and my major work, my uh, work revolves around React and uh, the JavaScript frameworks. So, currently, I am having alignment uh, towards uh, the front end side, but I am passionate about software engineering in general. So, yeah, yeah, that is what I do on daily basis. Uh, yeah, fun fact could be like uh, I am a like. Sucker for <laughs> the programming tees and uh, the swags, like I, I love them a lot. Like I can show like I'm having a uh, programming code written on my t-shirt right now as well. So yeah, uh, I, I, I just love, uh, love this coding and the nerdy stuff. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a sucker for that too. I completely understand. <laughs> so um, it seems like you're really involved in the open source world. Um, and I actually kind of know about you from your contributions to MDN. So can you maybe tell us a few words about your open source experience? Yeah. Uh, so I uh, like open source has been one of the parts where I, I got the confidence into what I'm learning. So generally when, when you are learning something you need to implement. So there are a lot of things that open source has helped me, uh, like, and one of the major things that I found is the mentorship part because everyone who has written this code, if we are contributing, then our quality is uh, sort of evaluated and reviewed, right? So that is something that I have uh, got a lot of learning from that. So even uh, what PR I made at MDN, right? That that just small thing, I still remember what I, what I wrote. It was related to this uh, screen reader visibility. So I still remember that and whenever I write code uh, for that, I, I remember uh, what fundamentals that you need to follow. So uh, also like at Chakra UI, I had a good opportunity to do the issue triaging. So that was also something that I could understand this large code base uh, and everyone is so helpful. So I, I feel very uh, blessed as a, even like specifically as a very new, new into this, this space, everyone is so much supportive and uh, that mentorship part has uh, a lot much on me. So that is one thing that I have particularly loved about open source. And apart from that, you build a very good network uh, with the folks, right? So that is what I, uh, I have truly and truly enjoyed. Uh, we we used to have a long, long just chit chatting with the with the contributors and the collaborators, just just knowing each other. So that was also something that you don't uh, really just do work, right? You also do something uh, that connects you. So uh, the open source is for everyone, uh, and whatever we, the technologies, whatever things are being built, they are all indebted to open source. So your even small contribution uh, is making such big impact and and that is also something that excites you to write more and more uh, better code or it could be like more contributions whenever you are uh, like available so yeah that, that's my alignment to open source now that you've been active you've been active now in the software industry for a while but maybe you can tell us a little bit about your background and what made you decide to get involved in this industry in the first place. Yeah, uh, so like uh, if, I, if I talk about my high school, so I was a science student, so there were a lot of options for me. I chose software engineering because uh, that was the, the best option that I could get because what I have seen, it has a lot of opportunities. You can literally go into 
a lot of areas and that to uh, involves a lot of research as well if you are into research if you are into doing something new then ai and everything are uh, there which are under like aggressive research today like blockchain and the other metaverse technologies are there for a lot of research right so that was my my reason for choosing software engineering but i was literally clueless i was just going to college and coming back doing those assignments and all but i was very i always had that fear that uh, will i be able to like go at a really good company so that phase of mine where i was just uh, in the bubble of my college and my that small network i had that competitive mindset that okay this person is like sort of doing better than me so will i be able to do even better so that that competitive mindset was actually was inside me that uh, am i doing better even i used to see like more github contributions i used to like get that envy feeling that uh, like uh, will i be able to get that i was always having that fear uh, under my head that uh, af- what after college what after my graduation and every everything was that and then i decided okay like let's not get into this this sort of mindset and let's come out and see like what the other other people uh, are doing on the internet and then slowly and gradually i started joining this discord servers uh, of different like uh, communities I, i joined this react flux which is very popular where you see job postings where you see different questions right so that was something i saw like people are just helping out you are just asking a question and a lot of uh, people who are very uh, very popular people in the maintainer and open source world they are helping to solve even small small bugs so that made me realize that okay like it is not that you are into a competition but there i learned the importance like open source fundamental that it is about collaboration first and code second sort of mindset so so that that is actually sort of uh, made me understand okay there is a lot more to it and then i i first stepped into machine learning side of things so i i did a lot of uh, learning on that side and i really enjoyed it uh, but but after a certain point i i i was getting into proper research but then due to some uh, some reason i my my friend just uh, told me like uh, you can you can uh, try web development uh, i am doing this so it was sort of a, a freelance work so i i did that and i really enjoyed it i i i didn't know that uh, css was uh, could be this interesting uh, generally generally it is a mindset that you uh, when you when you start learning then uh, you you have to do it so css was challenging but also interesting at the same time so uh, so i was like uh, getting those getting that alignment and then i saw like web development has if we see on a larger scale it has a lot of uh, job opportunities and plus i i found out that my software engineering fundamentals are uh, clearly seen practical in that part more compared to what i was doing uh, in other side for example if i say like uh, client server architecture right that is one main paradigm of software engineering so i could see that in practice in web development so that that just gave me that kick and plus one thing that you can build stuff so you can even build small small application for your day to day real usage right so that that actually uh, gave me that uh, sort of confidence and and at that point i realized that okay i can i can switch my uh focus and attention to just one thing at least for now i can go with web development and uh it is not like confined to just this field but i will do this so in ai i i did some uh, research and uh, review papers as well but i decided that this is not going to be at least for now this is not going to be my career path and i i i started learning javascript i started learning react and all so yeah this was sort of my uh like way i i divide uh, like the trajectory basically i i got into web development and then i started like just being involved in the community so by that i i learned a lot of things that's very interesting yeah um and so throughout this whole process of learning and experimenting and kind of switching even switching careers if you want to call it um what if you found the most challenging 
um, about the industry and about learning? Okay. Uh, I guess like the most challenging part is the is the start point, the head start. So so when when I I was just just into web development so first thing that i faced was the tutorial hell uh, any anyone who is into just starting out any technology uh, if if one just just sees the youtube videos and just do uh, the line by line implementation then the learning is actually cut off and that is just uh, literally uh, you are getting that fake uh, what dopamine hit <laughs> that you have made something but that is actually uh, that that is just you are doing from youtube video so so that i did for a lo long time i i used to watch like okay i want to learn for example react table right i want to learn table stuff on react so i used to watch that whole video in reality it should be i should read the documentation or i should read blogs so th this was a big big issue i i used to spend hours and hours of uh, watching videos even the different courses on udemy and all i took them and i was just watching and watching and very less implementation was there uh, and very less mind i was putting into it so so that act actually was a big challenge uh, even in machine learning i realized uh, that what i was doing previously uh, was just like looking at uh, different youtube videos or udemy or different like courses and then i i was just coding it out on my id and just making the output come but i feel that this is actually not not the right right way to learn so so then i i realized that i should focus i should uh, pressure myself a little bit that i i go to like these uh, documentation sites or like blog sites or even if i'm watching a tutorial video i should be mindful that i am using my own brain to make something giving things time so so then uh, this was a big challenge for me at least like i spent more than 4 months and even i got internship with that that particular knowledge that i was doing but even after the internship i realized that i still lack the fundamentals so this was something very insightful and then i came across a boot camp uh, called neoji camp so this web development boot camp actually helped me a lot in my career uh, what what i have learned from there the community and everything uh, i am totally indebted to uh, like uh, what what i have learned uh, in those that boot camp so there can be any any different sort of um these resources right but the idea is that even there you do this tutorial copy pasting or this type of thing then again that would be an issue so uh, so yeah one one idea that i have followed that first thing that i have to do is think by my mind then go to documentation understand it thoroughly and then if i'm getting nothing then i go to uh, maybe uh, just the youtube video and just quickly see but it is not that follow follow up that thing so so yeah that that was a little bit uh, thing i i could share about my experience yeah that's interesting um yeah i think for myself also what i have found is um i i find it hard to learn something if i don't have anywhere to use it like in in the moment if you know what i mean um, so I find like if I can think of a need, like, you know, the way they say uh, scratching your own itch, that thing. So I think of an idea and I'm like, OK, cool. So I have this idea. So what what technologies are out there that I'd like to learn? And then I would pick one of these technologies that I'm not as familiar with. And I would learn it and use it to build this thing that I that I then want to build for myself. I kind of feel like that is a better way for me personally um, of of learning uh, other than just, you know, building yet another to do application or something like that. That, that is very spot on. Uh, the one which you mentioned, like the way to go is understanding the problem and then searching for the available solutions, implemented solution in the market. Uh, for example, if I had to implement a graph library, I, I won't be going to a tutorial where the guy uses a graph library. Uh, but it would be like what 
what my design says what my future product requirement says or what i have at least imagined for my project that i would be implementing this this stuff in my graph and then i see different options like how how do you go for shopping right it is exactly like that you you see different things that are similar uh, for your use case but you choose whatever fits your need not what the the shopkeeper gives us right so so that is the idea that i feel in every everywhere i i have seen uh, in fact like in when I, when my professional uh, thing started we had to write this design documents for uh, for different uh, implementations so we used to research on uh, various options and uh, the thorough uh, for, uh, the library which we want to introduce so because that that takes up the bundle size right so uh, the the practice should be very uh, mindful about the feature and not the technology so yeah I agree 100% yeah um so you've mentioned a couple of resources but if if you had to pull together a couple of things that you found particularly useful up to now what are those resources right uh for resource i would say that first thing that uh the best resource i would say is the mdn documentation at least for web development that that is the way that uh, should come into practice uh, even if it is difficult for one as a beginner still it is something that okay you need to uh, like get used to it at least the starting part because all other resources are sort of an extract from this resource only right so not exact just this but uh the very like source of truth i guess uh, in the community i guess it is the mdn docs right so other other resources are an extract of this so one thing that if you need anything then uh, this is going to be your source of truth you can quote it like it is given at M- mdn so it there is a high possibility that we need to just reconsider our our belief about xyz uh, thing that we are knowing about javascript or web in general and then uh, but apart from this like uh, the fundamentals should be very very clear about any language uh, this this i have realized when i got some challenging work uh, so on building simple figma 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 screens implementation into code is very simple we can just make some css changes and just make the make the thing work but when there is com- complexity when there is uh, making things as scale or any any more complexity will be introduced then you will realize okay these this concept should be known else uh, on a longer run uh, the code will be spaghetti right so so that concept uh, javascript react uh, concepts are very important so i would say javascript.info is is the website that i have admired a lot they they have put everything so much structured and uh, nicely with very good example so for a beginner this is this is the uh, resource uh, it even it has help a lot uh, in interviews where you have to like crisp uh, you want crisp info so javascript info is uh, very good for beginners apart from that there is a youtube playlist called namaste js which is by akshay saini so he he also explains the javascript concepts and all in very very good depth i have uh, and also one thing that i realize that even if you are doing that tutorial hell thing in this as well it applies the same so this resource is also good but if you are uh, not implementing then it is again the same story but the reason why i i love this playlist or the videos uh, of namaste javascript is the the way that is being explained is from the core so that i that i particularly like it is not just syntax but it is how it works on the behind uh, so yeah but apart from that uh, if you if you really want to work on particular things like next js or uh, webpack or something like that then there is a front end masters course uh, which are like pretty good uh, i i got it from github pack so if you are a student then uh, definitely you should exercise your uh, github student pack and get uh, front end masters or else you can buy as well but front end masters course are really really quality courses so definitely i i would consider uh, buying or even like for resource or further learning so yeah
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to agree. Fire Masters is really good. I use that as well. So, um, so you've mentioned a whole bunch of resources and they sound great, but I'm wondering um, what do you find missing or stuff that can be improved? Okay. Uh, in these resources, one, one thing that uh, if we see like, if we see like blog based resource, I, uh, for example, Java stream info, right? So if you just read those blogs and uh, just uh, make the, the examples that they give, you just implement them. Then I guess it won't be enough. Uh, but so when you, when you read a book, right? If you just read the whole book without doing uh, thinking or implementing about it then it won't make any sense right so uh, it is it is the same with javascript info for example if you have learned uh, about closures right but uh, the ideal or a good way i would say it won't be just stopping at that point uh, you can just like give yourself some time to digest uh, then you can look for other blogs available on uh, maybe on medium or hash node these blogging websites and know how how other other concepts that you might have missed for example the the disadvantages of closures right this is this is a topic that uh, it might have not been covered at javascript info so you can just see like so when you give yourself time to digest things then only it will actually fruit else you will forget like if you read the whole javascript info in one day then it, it won't result into anything so that is one thing that is being uh, missing the other thing uh, i feel that uh, they are lacking code uh, like they are having having they are not having enough uh, code examples that uh, uh, you are uh, basically you need to be a, become a master or at least a good level at, at the particular technology not pointing at any one like all the all the resource because they have limitation of number of examples right because they don't want that content to be very long so as a developer uh, what i i used to do i used to like google uh, javascript questions on closures right there there will be 10 different websites i just used to pick and uh, put it on my github repo so i can refer them later so so this is way uh, we can just compensate uh, that because code is everything right uh, uh, enough number of lines of text is not that much uh, how much 10 liner code can explain so so that's why like code is uh, code is something that you need to have in abundance when you are uh, learning and uh, one one thing that uh, like javascript info example i gave right so one thing i used to do with my friend we used to do pair, pair learning so what we used to do like we used to pick uh, some topics of our uh, sort of the interview pro interview questions right the javascript fundamental questions for example it could be closures or promises we used to just divide e uh, a amongst each other and then we used to explain those to each other and then we used to have discussions and we used to have debates and then uh, we 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 ran across google and uh, searched like what was the real right answer so those conversations i feel they were like a lot more uh, productive than anything else so the human connect is something different that i have realized that when you have friends who are uh, into the same same path you are going towards then it is very helpful uh, and that that is also a big big benefit of uh, being a com in a community you just text on discord that okay uh, i i'm i have learned this i want to explain that to anyone who wants to join go on the the channel and just start like discussing discussing right so so this is uh, this is one thing that hel has helped me a lot in my interview learning process and uh, yeah th that is a one fond memory and i also made very good friendship with uh, like the bond as well so yeah that is really really interesting i've 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 never heard people say that before the specific like having a debate and you know that whole thing that's super interesting and I can imagine that'll work really well. 
I was just telling that we had a big like I guess one and a half hour debate on JavaScript is interpreted language or a compiled language because you know there is not exactly like one like the stamp answer to that there are a lot of complexity on what perspective you are talking so that was like really amazing discussion so yeah please go ahead so I was thinking you've you've been through the interview process so what do you think about interviews in the tech industry is a little scary and maybe you think should be changed or how do you think it can be improved? Yeah. So one thing that like I've recently gave a lot of interviews. So one thing that in common, which I, I realized that was a little bit of blocker was I was not even uh, having enough context of uh, what I will be like uh, giving interview uh, at right so just an example so some companies like ask uh, something very very advanced in the first rounds itself and some some of them just ask basics or even like even if even if we are doing for a front end role i was asked uh, something very unexpected about system design so that that is one thing that uh, there should be a little bit clarity upon what skills you will be assessed in a particular round so uh, you are prepared for example if i was asked like about web performance right but at that point i was not having uh, i was not remembering uh, what i learned about web performance at least at the time of the interview so uh, so i had to ask that could you let me google uh, so so they did let me but what if they didn't so i i was not remembering the names like fid or the terms so so that that could lead that i am not knowing but in reality i was knowing i i had learned about or uh, experimented about these things before so so yeah this these type of things i was once asked uh, uh, like dynamic programming question so generally i at least don't uh, expect a lot of there's this complex algorithm as a fresher into uh, front end that uh, we are asked a lot more uh, this typical uh, uh, data structure algorithm question but even if they are coming then i should know that okay i am i should be prepared so this is one thing uh, else like uh, uh, else i have i have a feeling that uh, for uh, for interviews uh, if you are prepared if you are prepared enough then then things are very very simple but uh, it is not not the case for every time and everyone right uh, some some people might be a little bit nervous or that is into nature because uh, that that depends right so so for that i feel that practice is something that that gives you confidence but we we as a human we need validation so even if i have solved 100 questions uh, and i practice a lot but that is not validated by someone so i need someone uh, to validate that okay i am at least ready to appear for interview so peers helped a lot uh, I, I used to give mock interviews uh, with my friends on twitter so they two three people on twitter helped me that uh, for mock interviews so even that person is uh, not as equal experience as us but at least we we can be confident that i am, am I able to explain so so that part i would i can add um, Apart from that, uh, like I, I always have that one, uh, one sort of fear that whatever I am knowing, uh, that in, in one interview I was asked like, do you know CSS? Then I literally had no answer. Like if I say yes, and that I am asked very, very difficult or in-depth question of CSS, then what will happen? So, so that thing I always. I'm uh, not sure that how much in-depth knowledge you want or you need for a particular role. So because that is very variable. Yeah. So so that was very, uh, very. And I have seen uh, in interviews, you are asked yourself to rate on some numbers, which I particularly find <laughs> uh, weird because I am I'm generally asked like out of mm -hmm. 10, how, how much you rate yourself. So 
I I don't know how because in even if you are react you are not Dan Dan Abramo right so so you know don't know everything so you cannot ten, tell like you are hmm. about eight or nine so yeah that sometimes but it's fine I don't think that is any issue that that's just a way to see <laughs> if you are confident enough so yeah I guess yeah yeah. yeah. Um so just uh, a pop quiz question um would you rather start your own business or rather start a com- uh, join a company yeah uh this is this is actually like very a question that i i actually don't have any right answer at least for now little bit tricky for me but um I I really want to start my own business but the key is like if I get get the right uh, right idea or a product that particularly I I believe in so if I if I want to do something and uh, I reach to that particular stage where I can actually implement that given that all the factors you need uh-huh. so so then definitely I I would go for like my startup or something but apart from that uh, uh-huh. even anywhere uh, i am at if if my work my whatever i'm i'm doing is valued and if i am satisfied at the end of the day then i guess that is uh, really cool you are doing good at work and life is also uh, apart from work like you you want to do what you are passionate about maybe some hobby or something that you do for fun so so that that balance is also some people look for that that is totally depending on person to person but i i i would like to also keep my hobbies as priority so i don't want to be a uh, super super workaholic i also want to have the balance between both <laughs> so that's yeah. good and that that leads nicely into the next question which is what do you like to do when you don't code or learn to code uh so <laughs> i would say like i do a different stuff i i just uh, i just ex- try experimenting different things for example uh, sometimes i see my friends learning uh, learning something i just ask like from where you are learning so uh, recently my friend was learning music and guitar and stuff so i have an interest in singing i am not a good singer but he sort of explained me uh, in more technical terms of music so uh, i i have been into that i i love doing that uh also like from from this new year like jan i decided that i i would focus more on my health as well so i i am been doing yoga and meditation and have continued that habit uh, till now so so that is also a win for me <laughs> but i i really enjoy enjoy That's doing good. yoga and uh, all these things they a lot good for mental health and peace so also for stretch and everything i i really feel energetic throughout the day uh apart from that i am yeah. i am having a very i not exactly hobby but i love uh, experimenting with my habits so even small small things like you you refrain some from something uh for one week like are you able to control yourself from doing that it could be as simple as uh, not watching tv this is a habit right you are mm-hmm. challenging yourself that uh okay i'm i'm not going to do something like it is more towards that part uh, like are are we not getting a lot much uh, slaves of our our own mind so so that is an exercise that i like doing yeah. whenever i like so <laughs> that's very interesting so um if you could recommend a single resource that could be a book a course youtube channel a community whatever um what would you recommend uh so for a book uh, i am not much into uh, reading self help books first of all but i have read atomic habits so that was like really really good book if you implement so so whatever is that is said in that book it has actually helped me a lot to uh, think back and uh, on what i am currently doing what my habits are and that is where i have uh, got this motivation to you know try try out different stuff and improve our habits because uh, so that is one book i would definitely recommend to implement uh, apart from that like uh, neoji camp boot camp is something that 
uh, has changed my trajectory about the career if if i had not uh, done that if i had not got the community there uh, and the friends and uh, the mentorship everything there then uh, like uh, i am not sure like what i would have been doing but yeah it is sort of very close to my heart and i am very indebted to that so so you can check that out it is a very very good uh, cohort of uh, learning web development so so yeah that is what i strongly recommend it is more about uh, you learn together and also they help you in placements as well if you if you intend to get a job then they help you with that as well so yeah it it has helped me uh, a lot so definitely but else resources wise uh, i guess if we if we see properly then we will find things around just uh, like be in connect with the community so because people has a lot of stories to tell so if you connect with someone today that person will tell you his or her 10 resources and then you you know a lot of things and then you you can evaluate what fits best for you but that information comes by communicating so so that is one thing that i i would say as a resource i say and apart from that like you asked about community so i i told about discord groups they are they are like amazing whenever you want to hang out you you should uh, at least in the tech community uh, networking is very very crucial part uh, because i have seen that uh like directly applying at a company's portal versus getting a referral is a very big difference uh so so that uh-huh. and also not a referral but you can at least ask the person like is the company really good like is it fitting your requirements so so that's why like networking is, is uh crucial in all different terms and uh yeah i have been attending and uh, being involved with the meetup groups uh in my in uh, like i have been involved with react uh, the technology that i am interested in so there is react bangalore uh, javascript bangalore meetups so these are the meetup groups that i have been involved i have also given couple of talks but overall uh, what i focus is on learning so so yeah uh, tech meetup groups are definitely a place to go uh, sometimes some uh-huh. saturday when you are free uh, you should hop in to the uh, live live meetings or uh, talks or workshops but yeah like. i i 100% agree community is super important if you could nominate someone that you think i should speak to on this podcast who who would you nominate yeah for first thing that i i feel that you should definitely talk with is sage uh, he is the uh, creator of chakra ui framework which is a very popular uh, front end framework so the reason uh, because i have like had been in the meetings uh, previously when i was involved with chakra ui actively he is a very humble person and very knowledgeable very expert in this this domain and i am really inspired uh, from what work he has put and what things he does for the community so so uh, that is my uh, like nom- nomination like if you would say that but uh, sage is sage is the person that i would say apart from that uh, johnny burger i am not sure you know him uh, i have seen him or not but he is a creator of remotion and i have also like uh, made a couple of small contribution and i have been in, on the discord so he is also very passionate person about open source and uh, overall so Uh, so yeah uh, definitely them and uh, like uh, if you want to uh, have uh, like talk about the more about student centric or learner centric side uh, so then i would recommend that you can uh, like uh, talk with uh, tanay pratap he is the founder of invact and he was also involved with neogcam he used to help uh, mentor us and teach us so yeah like uh, definitely he is uh, an amazing person uh, for for the students and uh, yeah like uh, this nice. is this is really uh, this can be very helpful for in anyone like learning getting started or yeah yeah those are all like great people i'll definitely reach out to them so uh, before we wrap this up 
Um, please tell us about any project you would like our audience to know about, um, any work uh, opportunities you're open to, what kinds um, you're interested in, and how people can contact you. Yeah, uh, sure. So, uh, first thing, like, to be honest, I have done a couple of projects, like, and all, but one, one project that has been, like, very close to me was... Uh, the one that I did in December, uh, not it. It was done in November. So basically, it is a um, uh, a mock backend uh, for for the front front end developers uh, who are just learning and making projects. So it is just for learning purpose. But the thing is, like, if you are making an e commerce application, right? So problem is, if you just make the front end, if we are making just front end and putting just dummy data then it is not making use any use of the api api call or the client client server thing or if i want to do something complex mm -hmm. if i want to call different apis in uh, sequence if i want to do something complex with the api calling i want to show loading states stuff like that so how i will be able to do that and if i'm not doing then real work of a front end person is not just making screens but it is also about state management or data how data will be loaded and everything like that mm. so so for that uh, i i built mock b uh, so it gives different templates for different projects so there are like more than uh, eight, eight nine templates are there uh, so like for e-commerce or nice. video library or social media and all so people are really using them and uh, finding it very helpful. So like uh, we also built, uh, so what problem we realized with the library that we are using under, under MockMe. So it was, it is a Mirage, Mirage JS uh, based like, uh, based project. So Mirage JS is a library for mocking okay. uh, these, uh, the, uh, the APIs, right? But the problem with Mirage JS is mm -hmm. you cannot uh, like do stuff that you do with the real APIs like you can go to postman or some some like tool and uh, like make the fetch call and see like what is the response that you cannot do uh, with that interface is not available to you when you are doing with Mirage.js or the mock mock piece sort of mm -hmm. not going to much technicalities but uh, for this problem statement we actually built another sister project called mockman uh, so basically this is exactly same as postman but uh, postman or some like i guess uh, the different tools are available for api testing right so exactly same but uh, for mm -hmm. mock apis so we we built this for mirage.js so that particular project is uh, powering more than 2000 uh, active github projects and overall like, these mock b and different wow. templates are having today like more than 18000 downloads so so yeah that is most impactful project and people like dm me put it on twitter that they are getting jobs uh, because they had it in their mock mock backend because the interviewer can see right the projects they are having real functionality so so yeah my project has mm -hmm. been on backend and it is helping people on the backend like backstage side so i'm very happy and proud about this project yeah <laughs> but i really want to maintain it as well that's in future. very cool yeah uh, thanks <laughs> well thank you so much for um joining me today soham i really enjoyed the conversation and um, I wish you all of the best for the future and looking forward to see all the great things you build. Yeah, uh, thank you so much once again for having me. It was, it was really good and uh, good luck for uh, the amazing things that you are doing for the community and uh, all hail Mycelium Network. <laughs> so that, that will be, <laughs> I, I will be on the server. I would like to see what, what amazing things that you bring. So yeah. Great conversation indeed. Thanks, Sam. Um, have a good rest of your day. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Mycelium Network podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with your friends. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Have something to add? Continue the conversation on GitHub and join the community on Slack. Until the next one, keep making the web awesome.